Walker on the on the line. I want to do the gossip game, Robin's news. Maybe even slip in a tape of Jay Leno on the Today Show reading to children. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, you're gonna love this. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Mm. Hold on a second. Mike. Mike. Hello. Anyway, we got the gossip game with Mike Walker. Am I doing something wrong here, Scott? I know you're in here p pressing a bunch of buttons. Oh, probably not. Scott! Mike, you hear me? Mike! I think you, when you hit all these utility buttons, you took me out, dude. No, he can hear you. We just can't hear him. Well, we Every need to hear him. Music the way you want it. Why do I have to be here? Look, I see what you're doing wrong already. Get out of here. You got to press one of these buttons down. Oh, yeah, out. good. Howard. Yeah, hi. Hey, you're Mike. <laughs> yeah, hi. I've been here the way you want it. It's my engineer. Uh huh. Scott, you can't come in here and hit a bunch of buttons when you're hanging upside down. Scott! You, you know what I mean? Like when you're doing it, come in here, ask me to move, and, and do it the right way. Come on, what's the matter with you? You've been at the game long enough, bro. You see him upside down hitting a bunch of buttons. And I'm like, he has enough trouble looking at it upside right. Not upside down. Even when he was right side up, he couldn't tell what was That's wrong. what I'm saying. <laughs> How are you We're doing, Mike? About, I'm doing fine, Howard. How are you? Let me uh, just do your intro here. Uh, to play the gossip game with Mike Walker online, go to nationalenquirer.com and listen to Mike on Sunday afternoons from 1 to 3 on our great affiliate in Los Angeles, KLSX 97.1 FM. What Mike does here is uh, he gives us four stories. You, again, I was brilliant last week when I picked out immediately which story was false. Lucky. You were brilliant. Thank you. Come on, Robin. He was. He was so a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Here are four stories. Oh, boy, wait a minute. i got to tell you something. Uh oh You just mentioned Jay Leno. Yeah. I never give away an item that is going to be in my column a week in advance. I'm going to do it for the first time ever. You've got to hear this. This is ho Fred. Where's the exclusive music? Exclusive. I didn't know you had exclusive music. We do shall, now. Shall I pause or shall I, I just go Just on? do your thing. Okay. Did Leno so, gay rape someone? Well, you Hopefully. have publicly... Close. You, <laughs> oh, this sounds good. You didn't deny it. You, you have... Oh, wait a second. Sir, exclusive. Yes. You have publicly dissed Jay as a phony. And, and you've implied that he is a thief. Well, he is. He, and he told you, if I remember correctly, in his conversation with you, that he wasn't ripping anything off, that John was going over there as an announcer, which nobody really believed. Right. Well, he's only ripped off about 20 different items from this show, 20 different bits, routines, but... You know, oh, that wasn't me, that was Steve Allen. I, I, I didn't right. Listen to you. Steve Allen did right. everything. And Steve and Allen, and he's just ripping off Steve Allen. So, um... It is now official, however, that he has sent out John with head writer Joe Medeiros of The Tonight Show. Yeah, head, the, Joe Medeiros must be the guy who's got the heart on for the show. Sort of yeah. the and they have gone out already to do with John remotes, tests of them. They're already out there doing them. Doing what? Doing remotes, going out, interviewing people. Yeah, you right. Know, doing you know, it doesn't doing matter to me. I mean, yeah, the wacky mm. John interview. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, Jay Leno is a, Jay Leno's a robot. After I just slammed him over the phone, he goes to me, "Are we still going to be friends?" Mm. Like, you know, I'm just like you know, Jay, develop something on your own, and then maybe I'll be your friend. Well, what you happened to this guy? Yeah. You remember I told you uh, you mentioned on the show that uh, I had uh, put in the column that the whole show staff was baffled by the hiring of John and there of was course. one female producer who was behind it, but I didn't say why because I didn't know. Finally found out why. Actually, a fairly valid reason. She hates the J. Kevin Eubanks banter 
and she figures John will make a better chat buddy. So there's yeah. plans to put John into the Well, here's the problem. John's not the problem. It's Jay. Jay doesn't know how to chat with anyone. He sits there with Mel Gibson. And, hey, I, I, I understand. So you did this movie, and there's what some sign of controversy, controversy. Yeah, so. and what's that all about? You're being criticized. Yeah, I mean, Jay's a puppet head who's very good at standing there and telling jokes, but when it comes to actually having a human interaction, he can't do it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whatever. World's worst interviewer, and, you know, and then... Even saying goodbye to his announcer, you know, was like scripted for him. It was like the two of them had anything in common. Right. Well, people who were at the party, they had a party for uh, Ed Hall, and they said it was really weird because, of course, the convention over there is that Ed just decided to go on and, and uh, you know, pursue his movie career. Yeah, like that's going to happen. And, and it was a very uncomfortable party, I was told, because, of course, everybody knows, you know, what the real situation is. Yeah, whatever. Hey, anyway, so uh, there you go, your world exclusive. Uh, Howard Stern, exclusive. Well, let's go to the four stories. All right. And you've got to pick out, if you remember, the one that is not true. I know how to do it. All right. Story number one. After phoning a plumber to fix a stopped-up toilet in a guest bathroom, Barbara Streisand went out shopping, then returned home and asked her maid if it was fixed. No, ma'am, she was told there's a rusted-out fitting he didn't have in his truck, but he'll be back tomorrow. Moments later, Streisand freaked when she walked into her private bathroom and was nearly knocked down by a putrid whiff of pungent man stink. Barbara shrieked for the maid, who admitted he asked if he could use the bathroom. The raging diva immediately fired the maid, then phoned another plumbing company and had them install a brand new toilet. Wow. <laughs> Number two. Shopping at Swanky Fendi on Rodeo Drive, Nicole Kidden picked out roll purses, wallets, and other accessories and asked the sales girl for a star discount. Moments later, the smiling lass told Nicole that the manager had okayed half off on every single item. Snapped the Oscar winner only 50%. That's not enough. And out she stormed empty-handed. Holy cow, I hope that's not true. Number three. At the Upper Crusty Beverly Hills Hotel, they call Prince the artist known as a noisy pain in the butt. Guests complained that the wee warbler started serenading wife Manuela on the balcony of their suite in the wee hours, strumming an acoustic guitar and crooning the girl from Ipanema. When the front desk gave him a shut-up call, Prince huffed, you know what MTV would pay me to do an acoustic unplugged concert? All right. Uh, is he married, Prince? Yes, oh, I didn't know his Manuela was his wife. Okay, number four. Yes. Shopping on Melrose, Princess Paris Hilton hotly ignored peaking peasants and caused quite a scene, nonchalantly peekabooing her twin peaks in public. Shoppers gawked when Paris swept into a shishi boutique, browsed the rack, spotted a sexy shirt, and squealed to a girlfriend, I've got to try this on. The shop was jammed and every dressing room was occupied, but Paris simply sashayed to a mirror and casually stripped off her top, exposing million air mammaries to die for. Oblivious to a gaping crowd of gals and guys, Paris slipped on the new shirt, posed in the mirror, and then stripped topless again, put on her original top, and handed the new one to the stunned sales girl, chirping cheerily, I'll take it. Barbara Streisand fired her maid because the plumber was allowed to use the toilet. Nicole Kidman demands a discount and is dissatisfied with half-off. Prince loudly serenading his wife, causing a disturbance. Paris Hilton stripping in a department store and showing her, her boobs. Yeah. The fake story is Nicole Kidman. All right. Robin, go ahead. The fake story is the artist also known as Prince. Fred? It's between oh. Prince and Streisand. Uh, I'm going to say Streisand. Artie? I would love to leave Man Stink in Streisand's yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> man stink. I, I would love to leave my man stink <laughs> all a, over. A word Barbara. I coined, by the way. Very what nice. a great website, manstink.com. <laughs> Anybody got that one? I want I it. I think you can coin, put that one in. Gary, quickly buy that one before anyone else can. <laughs> Quick, get Jeff Schick on the phone. Tell him to get me manstink.com. I want it. I left man stink with Barbara. <laughs> Please, I want it now. Jeff, get it for me. Quick. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I won. Uh, this is being stolen right in front of my eyes. I just I, coined you that. You didn't think of it. Yeah, I, I understand you. Yeah, I thought of it. I'm Jay Leno. You yeah. didn't think of Man's Wait a minute. I've got Man's Stank. 
<laughs> hey, I won last week by uh, piggybacking on Howard, so I'm doing it, it was again. An incredible win for you, Artie. Yeah, I'm, right. still, I'm still tingling. I'm going Artie, the... Artie and Howard say Nicole Kidman. Robin says Prince. Fred says Barbara Streisand. Yes. Nobody picked Paris Hilton. Mike Walker, National Enquirer, KLSX radio host. What is the right Tell answer? Tell them I won, Mike. What's the fake story? Oh, Robin, Howard, you were so decisive today. It would be so great to say to one of you, you won. <laughs> but you didn't. <laughs> you <Fred> lost. <laughs> you were so that's right. Fred is the winner. Good for you, Fred. Barbara Streisand. I focused in on the man stink word. It was the same man stink? Did, and, I, uh, and something smelled, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> As we speak, I better own man stink. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, all right, Howard. Take care. The great Mike Walker will take a break. And, or, or can we start the news? Uh, break wouldn't hurt. Break, then the news, right after these words. Howard Stern says... The shock jocks quotations such as, It's okay for a man to commit adultery if his wife is ugly. The Howard Stern Show.